Hi everyone, my name's Gail Brown. I'm a literacy consultant and an instructional researcher. And Lonelle and I would like to welcome you this morning to our next coffee chat. Yeah. Where Lonelle's going to talk about Lonelle's going to talk about um, some a student with maths anxiety. So over to you, Lonelle. Ah, oh, yes, I'm Lynelle Campbell and I'm the numeracy consultant. So we're going to delve into our numeracy student. So we want to talk today about how to help a year three student who has just given up on herself and on maths because she's struggling in this area. She's just hasn't got the skills she needs to do the year three maths and she hasn't got the understanding of what's going on. So how common is that, Linnell, in schools today? And Well, I think it goes together very well. Once the struggles start, the anxiety starts at about the same time. So wherever the, you know, if the students can start struggling as early as kindergarten even, and, and they can start to believe they're no good at maths from their first year of formal school. Yeah, and I think that that really is a commonality in literacy because mm. whenever students are struggling with any literacy skill, reading or writing or spelling, they become anxious about it and it becomes like a negative spiral. So I, I think that's some something that's similar for both of us. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and it, look, it's, it's, it's human to not yep. want to do something that you're not good at. You know, I don't like doing high jump. I'm not good at high jump or um, lots of athletics, actually. It's, so, you know, we, we withdraw from those activities, subjects, tasks, whatever, that we don't feel that we're good at. Yeah. But unfortunately, when it comes to literacy and numeracy, we need to persist and get the basic skills and understandings because it's our goal, you know, and it needs to be everybody's goal that students leave school numerate and literate. Yep. Yep. So, so our little story is about Tammy and she's in year three. She hasn't got a lot of strategies. She's, she's moved around schools a little bit and that can contribute to this difficulty because the strategies and the way of teaching maths from one school to the other can be quite different. And as the teacher changes their language, the students can think, I don't know what's going on here. And that's what's happened for Tammy. Yeah. So her teacher wants to meet her needs and she wants to build Tammy's confidence. But what is she going to do? Well, she needs to gather some evidence. Yeah. So my first suggestion whenever students are struggling at school is to find out what their number sense is. And I use the NKT interview. And I'll, I'll put a link at the end of this coffee chat for you to have a look at that if that's something you'd like to find out about the students you work with too. Yep. You can also just look at the general assessments that you give the whole class and just get a feel for where the student you're concerned about is falling. You know, are, are they, yep. is this average for your class really or is it below average for your class? And sometimes um, you can even look at just what their work is on a daily basis and see whether they're completing. And you don't have to wait till the end of the unit. That's right. Look at that. So yeah, yeah it's great. Yeah. So you don't you don't have to do a whole lot of extra assessment. Just look at what you've got available yeah. to you. Yeah. Um, although I do highly recommend a number sense screener, yeah. which is the NKT. Um, yeah. And then the goal setting conference. I've called it that, which is actually um, where you gather some more evidence with the student themselves and or with their families. And that's where I found out that Tammy had moved around a fair bit. Yep. And that's another commonality with literacy because you can also set goals for different literacy skills. So we're not, we're talking about similar things, whether it's literacy or numeracy. Absolutely. Right. Yep. So once the teacher has got this extra information, then then she can set some quite more specific goals. She certainly wants to help Tammy's confidence and enjoyment of maths improve and to ensure that she has success well, because that's going to improve her confidence and enjoyment. Yeah. And as specifically, 
help her with her number sense because the research is so powerful that without number sense, students cannot um, have success in yep. maths. Yep. So what are the interventions that are most suitable for Tammy is for the classroom teacher to have regular numeracy warm up. So that's regular, we're talking daily with a number sense focus. So things like counting with visual models there or, and or concrete materials there so that Tammy can see that when we count up to bigger numbers, the pile gets bigger or we move along the number line yeah. and start to get that sense of how numbers are relating to each other. And also then you can do that in skip counting and seeing that regular jumps of 10, um, the, the ones column doesn't change. And a whole lot of language can um, be unpacked and explained and reviewed daily. All these are additional opportunities for more practice and more consolidation of what she knows and then a small extension, which is great. Yeah. So yeah, Tammy did still need some extra support to fill in those gaps of the earlier years content that for whatever reason, whether it was shifting schools or not paying attention on a particular day or missing content that to fill it, plug in those gaps so that she could work at the year three level. Yep, yep. So that particular model there, we're not going to unpack that today. Um, in the coffee and cake session, we can talk more about how that model I've got up on the screen is research-based and so helpful to a classroom teacher and, and yep. an intervention teacher to help students to catch up in numeracy. So what was the results uh, for Tammy was definitely increased engagement and confidence. Those regular numeracy warm-ups, it's just so exciting for teachers to see that you do this. I actually talk to teachers about the fact you don't have to keep changing the activities each day. Um, it's actually preferable to, to be repetitive about them. Let's do the same activity we did yesterday. It is. I think teachers think it's got to be new and different every day. And I think that's a little bit of a mistake because unless we practice something exactly the same way with a bit of an extension, we don't get better. Okay. After all, I, as you know, Linnell, I always talk about my ironing and we iron so many different things or we used to, <laughs> and we'd be doing it over and over again on those same school shirts or those same school uniforms. And that's how we would get better and faster. Yep. So, yeah, I agree with you totally. Well, I think we fall into the trap of thinking I'm not a good teacher unless I'm creative and, and coming up with something new and different every day. Um, but new and different every day for students um, to feel confident is, is not, very off-putting. You know, it's sort of like, oh, oh, what's, what's the expectations today? What's yeah. the language that she's using today or that he's using today? Oh, I'm not too sure. And when we're not too sure of what's expected, we don't like to put our hands up and be vulnerable. No, no. And remember, our working memories are quite small for all of us. And so we're trying to build in very small steps. Yeah. every lesson so that does involve a lot of repetition and review mm. so yeah and right. when you do that this is the result yeah. so in that conference with Tammy we actually asked her what she thought about maths and you might remember a few slides back it was the very sad face yes now it's and you know with younger children you can just get them to you know point to how they feel about something by pointing to a face well then finally you know how does she think of about maths now, well, we've got a smiley face. And that's part of what we want to do as maths teachers to help students to want to do maths. Nothing worse than a little child saying, I'm no good at maths, I don't want to do maths, and pulling back. You know, what chance have they got of leaving school numerate if they've already given up on themselves and given up on maths? And I think some teachers always think about having fun. And I think having fun is important, but it's important to like it. And I think if we just shift that to liking something and can do it, that's almost as good as having fun. It's almost as good. It's like playing for, for children. I like that it's point. Easy. Yeah. It, it does concern me that we prioritize fun in maths over learning. 
Correct. And it should always be the other way around. Learning is the goal of what teachers do. Hmm. And, and there's nothing more exciting than success. Yep. And that light bulb moment that you see in children when they go, aha, I get it now. Yeah. That, that's what you focus on as the fun part for you as a teacher. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. And okay. I love it. So these are the resources that hyperlinks will work. Um, I've popped in a little article there by Paul Swan and Linda Marshall, which is a little um, research article they did of around using concrete materials, which I mentioned earlier. They are so important, but we do have to use them correctly and understand and their use. Yep. Well, we That's won't go into that today. We'll do more of that in the coffee and cake. That article is open access, so freely available? Yes, yes. Yeah, great, great. So okay. you can click on that and have a little read. It's not a very long yep. one, but um, I think the conclusions are quite powerful around now, understanding how to use. Our coffee and cake session will be available to members of our Learn and Grow Literacy Numeracy Group. So... We'd love it if you could join us for those because we can tease out in more details exactly what the intervention looked like, how it worked, and how you actually do use those manipulative materials effectively for learning as well as fun. Okay. Thanks, everyone, for joining us today, and we look forward to meeting you in Coffee and Cake. Bye for now. Bye. Okay.